So today let's have a look at the OR tools example number four. Example number four concerns the prediction of the transformation texture in an alpha beta titanium alloy. So the example can be found on the on the uh, OR tools GitHub page again here under example four. And we explain a little bit what we're doing and yeah, the um, command plot PODF transformation is basically the main the main function we're going to use from this toolbox. So let's have a look in MATLAB. So I am inside the MATLAB folder. I opened this example four. Um, and we're just going to begin running the script. Again, if you've not seen the other examples, I would recommend you to watch example two, where I'm going to show a little bit more on the reconstruction of the alpha beta titanium microstructure. Here we are more or less going to rush through it um, to get to the interesting part of the transformation texture. So we um, open mtag, initialize some paths, we load the alpha beta titanium data set from mtag, um, then we're going to calculate the grains. And after the grains are calculated, we are going to rename the faces and recolor the faces. So here we have the menu, we call this one beta. I call this one alpha. Then we choose color red and green. So now we uh, find the orientation relationship. This time we just um, initialize it as a burger's orientation, burger orientation relationship immediately, because we saw last time that that was very close to um, the one we wanted to observe. So we can just briefly um, plot some maps here. So we can have a look at the IPF uh, map. So this is how the child face looks. And then we're also gonna plot the grain boundary misfit map. which is here. So we can kind of see that the rotation relationship of burgers fits quite well with the inner part of the beta grains. So now we very fastly rush through this um, entire construction. Again, if you want the details, go to example two. Um, after reconstruction is done, we're just gonna plot the parent grains. Here we are. So this is the, the parent EBSD microstructure. Um, and then we're gonna now actually get closer to what we actually want to do in this example. So we're gonna calculate the variance. Um, when we've done that, we can again plot a map of all the variants. So this is the variant map and we can see that yeah, we kind of have all the colors quite evenly distributed. It seems like there's no strong variant selection in this kind of alloy, apart from some of the alpha that formed from the grain boundaries. You can see that we have yeah, quite preferential alpha right there. Um, so what we can do to actually confirm this is we can plot the histogram um, of the variants. And we can see here that the frequency of the variants is more or less even. There's some variants which seem to be preferred, like uh, variant three, four, six, eight, 10, 11, but yeah, they're roughly evenly distributed, I would say. So that's why we now can actually go ahead and start predicting the transformation texture. So how are we gonna do this? We now basically had an already transformed material. We then reconstructed the beta phase or the parent phase from that. And now we can calculate the actual transformation texture of this parent phase to see if it fits with the child grains that we've actually experimentally observed. So this is the exercise we're gonna do right now. All this is happening in this kind of section here and I'm not gonna run uh, the commands uh, bit by bit so you can follow. So these here are actually the um, crystal directions uh, in the parent and in the child phase that we want to plot. So we want to um, plot the 110, the 100 pole figure in the parent phase and the 0002, 11 minus 20 um, pole figure in the child phase. So what we do now is we take the parent uh, EBSD data and compute an ODF from that. 
this done pretty fast and then we can actually plot the pole figure that um, relates to this ODF to see how the orientation distribution of the parent microstructure is. So these are the reconstructed parent grains. Um, so basically these reconstructed parent grains here in an ODF pole figure 100 and 110. Um, so now we can actually export orientations from this kind of um, ODF. So we take this ODF here and um, use this function export VPSC to um, export a number of discrete orientation points that um, yeah, follow the this um, orientation density function. So we take an overall of 50,000 points and write this into this input VPC texture file. So it's basically just one uh, long list of discrete orientations that um, yeah, follow this ODF. So now, after having written this file, we can um, use this plot p ODF transformation. This is one of the um, functions within the OR uh, tools toolbox. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, actually read in those orientations here. We're going to transform these orientations using the orientation relationship um, given in the parent grain reconstructor class here. And when we've transformed this orientation, we basically make a new ODF from that and plot that. Um, currently, the direct transformation of ODFs in MTech is not supported yet, but it is on the agenda for the future. So we kind of have to go this intermediate way through a list of orientations to do the transformation of the texture. So now we execute this function and we get a, a number of plots out of it. So these are all the plots we've gotten. Let's take them uh, piece by piece. So this is again the parent pole figure. We already plotted this before. Um, these are the ODF sections of the parent. Then this here is actually the, the pole figure of the child texture that is formed by applying the orientation relationship um, to, to this parent um, ODF. And this assumes basically that every variant is uh, a full form of the same likelihood. So there's no um, variant selection in this kind of computation. And at last, we also get the ODF section of the child face. So the interesting part will, of course, now be to compare this um, predicted kind of uh, transformation texture with the actual transformation texture in the microstructure. Um, so what we can do, therefore, is actually take our microstructure orientations, uh, calculate the ODF, and then plot that. So this is actually the this is the actual um, alpha texture that we find in the material. If you compare that with the uh, predicted transformation texture, you will see that we have quite good agreement. There's yeah, basically the um, yeah I think the the intensity poles they fit um, perfectly between the predicted and the actual texture, and the intensities roughly follow, I would say. There's uh, some difference here and there, which um, probably have to do with uh, a little bit of variant selection and microstructure, but I think um, it's a pretty good prediction here. Um, then there's one last thing I would like to show you um, before we conclude this. Um, you can also use this plot p ODF transformation um, command with the argument variant ID, and then you can put in actually which variants should take part in the transformation. So you can say, please only transform by the means of variant three, four, six, and eight. Um, if you do this, we kind of get the same um, figures plotted as before, just um, yeah, limited to these variants that can form. So these are the figures that we've received. It says here variants three, four, six, eight. And we can compare this with the um, I think these were the predicted variants, um, the predicted texture with all variants versus some variants. And you can just see that some of the intensities are completely missing. And yeah, the, the basically the intensity distribution has changed. So in this way, you can actually see the effect of different variants on the transformation texture as well. In the future, we're planning to um, actually make this uh, weighted as well so that you can take certain, let's say, non one or zero weights for. Um, for those or intermediate weights between one and zero for the different variants. This is a point that will 
probably be implemented in the future, just as well that we can go from ODF to ODF without going over the um, over this orientation list. But honestly, like if you just make this number here big enough, like um, the the effect of not directly going from ODF to ODF is not that big. I mean, if you make this a small number, 100 points or something, the effect would be quite large. If you make this number bigger than this, it would take a little longer time. But if you're looking for a publication ready figure, just make this value quite high and you're basically going to get a nice um, output from it. So that was it for uh, this example. Um, I would like to mention that you can actually also um, compute transformation textures from fibers and from orientations. So we don't have to necessarily necessarily um, approximate the ODF from the microstructure. Um, this is probably going to be dealt with in a future example where we use the functions orientation maker and fiber maker to make ideal fibers and orientations and then apply the transformation to that and get the transformation texture. All right, thank you for now.